Welcome to Laura Murphy here to the program. Uh, she's going to fight UFC Fight Night 83, but as of yesterday, she's no longer fighting Sarah Morris, who pulled out, what did she do? She broke her femur? Is that is that what happened? No. No, she dislocated her thumb. Oh, okay, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> she pulled out because she hurt her thumb? I yeah. mean, like, it's got, I mean, it must be pretty bad, Matt. I can't see her pulling out for like a, something simple, like a little you know, hangnail, but... So really a full dislocation is what you were told. I was told that her thumb was dislocated and that, um, I don't know, she said she tore a ligament or something. So I don't know. All I know is that there's guys out there that are fighting with like torn knees. They go in with broken thumbs. Like, you know what I mean? We all have something. Guys have gone in there, fought with broken toes, broken fingers, torn ligaments, tendons, ACLs, MCLs, and they still get in there and fucking fight. And uh, I don't know. I it. You know, eight days before a UFC fight, like. Okay, first I gotta ask: Are they gonna find a replacement for you? Yes, they are working really hard to find a replacement, and uh, I just talked to Sean today, and I feel very confident that they'll find somebody for me to fight. Uh, when she says Sean, she means Sean Shelby, who handles all the women plus the lighter weight men. Um, so for the women, Sean is a very important person to get a hold of because, honestly, in a situation like this, he can make or break your entire month, your entire quarter. From a payment yeah. standpoint, if he doesn't find you replacement, you do all his training. You still have training bills, supplement bills, training partner bills, mortgage payment to pay, car payment to pay. <laughs> no money. Like it's potential that it could it could come out where you're not making any money at all. Yeah, and that I mean that's a terrible situation. I think the UFC knows that. You know, Sean's been doing this a long time. He knows that I trained really hard. Like I would have gotten there and fought with no thumbs. So <laughs> I think when you know, I think he knows that we had a really good camp. We put everything into this. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to go. And, and so he's. I'm more than confident that that man will do an outstanding job of finding me an opponent. Or no, you're coming off a two fight losing streak, and so you're going with broken thumbs, no thumbs. That could be your third loss, and that means potentially could mean that you're out of the UFC. Would you really go in with that much damage to your body just to get the payday, or would you have to really think about long-term career and go, I'm going to have to sit this one out. I might actually have to pull out a one. Yeah, you got to think about that stuff, but I'm confident enough in my skills that, you know, first of all, you can't tell me that I lost those fights. I don't think I lost those fights, and I, I don't. I think most people would agree that I did not, but especially that last one. But – um you know, I, I've been working really hard, even between my losses. I've been using that time really wisely, and I do. I really believe that I could have gone in there and fought Sarah Morris with one hand and put on a hell of a show. And really, if you go in there and you have some good fights and you just give it everything you got, the UFC is going to be really hesitant to cut you. Even if you lose and you have a great fight, they are not going to want to cut you. They want people in there that get in there and fight their asses off. So, so you're in a tough spot, like. Let's talk about motivation now. Uh, it's a Saturday, so I'm assuming you finished your workouts for the day already. But yeah. are you still motivated to get up and, like, I don't have an opponent now, but I still got to get the work in because I, I still only have eight days left potentially to face somebody else? Yeah, well, even more because you don't know who it is. So instead of working on specific shit that I was working on, like, now I'm like, oh, shit, look at all the other shit we neglected. And, like, now I got to get in there and kind of tighten some things up that maybe we weren't looking at. Some things that I wasn't worried about. You never know. You might end up fighting somebody that's got a completely different fight style now. And that, that's a little bit scary. I mean, that's got to be a rough position to be in, too, because you train for one style and obviously you have a completely different style. But do you really train for your opponent as much as you really train to make yourself better every training camp? Well, this camp, that's something that I really did differently. I really changed the way that I was thinking this camp, and I worked a lot on my mental game. And part of that was like, okay, I'm going to get better everywhere. You know, when I fought Sarah McMahon, I was so worried about fighting a wrestler. And when I fought Liz Carmouche, I was so worried about getting taken down by her and her ground and pound and everything else. And I think I let that get into my head so much that that it affected my performance. So ever since I fought Liz and then my last, you know, the last six weeks that I've been training, it's been all about what can I do to make myself better and thinking like, like some days I would go into camp and I would think like, okay, today I'm training for this person. Today I'm training for this person. And I would put different opponents in my head that are in the women's division just so that I know I'm ready to go in there and fight anybody. You know what I mean? And for me, that was really like eye opening for my camp to be in that mindset. I'm ready to fight anybody in this division. So if you had your choice now that you, you obviously can have a choice, they could, they could put anybody in front of you that that's healthy and ready to go. If you could say, Sean, I really want to fight this particular person, who would it be? Holly Holm. <laughs> 
Well, I, like, look, if you're going to, I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well go big. Um, I did ask to fight Larissa Pacheco because um, her and I are kind of in the same spot. I, I've always kind of thought that would be a good fight, even before either of us were in the UFC. She was the Jungle Fights champ. I was the Invicta champ. We were both 8-0. We came into the UFC. Both of us suffered our first two losses. So I honestly feel like that'd be a great fight. The problem is, is getting her a visa. I think she is healthy and ready to go, but... Anybody international, it was hard to get a visa. And then we looked at the roster, and anybody stateside was either injured or already had a fight lined up or something like that. So um, Sean's working really hard to figure out what he can figure out and, and get somebody in there. There's this other thing. I mean, obviously, you know, I talked to BJ Penn quite a bit, and BJ's getting ready for his comeback fight. And he wanted to fight March 5th. He was begging for the March 5th card. Obviously, it's a great card to be on with McGregor and Dos Anjos and, and, and um, Holmes and Tate fighting, that obviously makes for a great, you know, to be part of that card makes amazing. And he was denied. Like, they, they told me you have to push it back to, I think, April now sometimes he's going to fight because of the drug testing. WADA wants them under their control for two months or longer. What has the new drug testing been like for you since it's come out? You've been in the UFC the entire time as this drug testing thing came about. What's it been like for you? Has it been intrusive? Has it been a kind of a pain in the ass after all of a sudden get a knock on your door at six in the morning? Like, what's it been like for you? I'm not quite that important yet. Nobody's come to my house, but um, they did come to the gym a couple weeks ago and they drug tested me. And honestly, I don't worry about it at all because I don't take any supplements at all. So I never really worry. Like, I've never worried about the drug tests. Um, yeah, and even like like some of the guys at the gym will take amino acids and like that's the I mean, that's the only thing I would ever consider taking is amino acids. And even that I'm wary of, you know, I just like, who is it that just got suspended? And it was something in this. To me, to me, that's, yeah, what, that's what he's saying right now is that it was Dirty Bird said that he got caught um, from yeah. uh, something to something. Like he had to take photos of all the supplements, send samples in, had it all looked at and like, yeah, it's what it is. Like you get it's stuff in your supplements is, is get, making you pop hot. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I just, I'm terrified of something like that happening. And, um, so I don't really take, I don't, I, I'll take like protein or something like make a protein shake after practice. And that's about the extent of my supplement use. And other than that, like I, I know I'm drug free and totally clean. So I don't, I've never worried about it. I, I don't care if they drug test me every single day. So people think about supplements as like a food source. Like you're, you're, this is like one of your snacks or whatever, but a supplement is supposed to supplement your, your dietary needs. It's supposed to supplement what you're not getting from your daily eating allowance. Right? If you're not taking any supplements, then you have to be on a pretty regime, pretty regulated diet program then to make sure you're getting enough fruits and vegetables and proteins and amino acids and all that stuff to make your body work. Who helps you with that astronomical course? Then? You know, it's, it's gotta be crazy. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a learning process my whole career. Like, uh, and you know, honestly, I don't cut that much weight. So I eat a lot. I eat a ton. And I'll eat whatever I'm craving. And to me, it's like, okay, if I'm craving something, that means my body needs it. And um, I try to be a little bit more picky towards the end of camp. I eat a little bit lighter. I cut sodium out, you know, the last like seven days or so. But that's really the extent of it. And I just, I, my walking weight is pretty close to my fight weight. So so what are you, what are you weighing right now then? Today, Saturday's eight days before the fight. I woke up this morning at 143. Oh, geez. Yeah, you like skip breakfast, you made weight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, so, um, you know what I mean? And usually on weigh in days, I can wake up, I'll have a cup of coffee, put some creamer in it. You know what I mean? Get a small drink of water and be good to go. Like, we'll go have, like, I'll hit mitts for like 10 minutes and be on weight. And that's usually all it takes. So, that's awesome. Being able to rest the whole, pretty much rest the whole day before you actually have to fight is, is actually a, a huge benefit. Oh, I love it because we'll go in fight week. And then I get to work out and have these good drilling sessions with my teammates. We'll hit mitts. We'll work on all the specific stuff I want to do in the fight. And I get to just practice it all week and I'm not too tired. Man, we've seen guys sometimes in those rooms and they look like they're dead. And it'll be like three days before weigh-ins and they can't move. They can't work out. They're just struggling to like not freak out. And I, you know, I'm like, shit, I'm going to go check out the city. And you know what I mean? So I was one of those guys, like literally the whole last month of training i'm just worried about making weight i'm not worried about hitting the right combination i'm not worried about getting the right weights up i'm like i gotta get weight off like i'm just trying to cut weight and so yeah it cut my career short because i was cutting too much weight like i of course i did it all through college too i was a wrestler so i cut weight then too and now yeah. like with two little boys and 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 they're getting sports oriented it's like they're not cutting weight like whatever they weigh is what they're gonna go because i, I should be six foot 
I'm five foot ten. I've stunted my growth because of oh. that weight. So like I'm that guy. So I totally understand what you're saying, and I'm so jealous that you're able to do it like this. That I couldn't figure it out mentally how to do that. Like I was just like, no, I got to cut weight all the time. Well, it wasn't like a genius decision on my part. Like I just fell into it, honestly. And 135 is is the division they have in the UFC now. If they open a 125 division, which they said they're going to do, I would love to go down to 125, and then I'll have to start, you know, really doing my research on my supplements and looking into a better diet and, and being a little more strict, but you know, 10 pounds, if it's like, maybe if I just dieted a little bit more, cut my calories a bit and then, you know, sweat out the rest that I think I can make 125. And I think I could be a champion at 125. Easy. All you really have to do is, is, is get your body fat, really get your body fat checked. And like you said, make sure you're not going below that dangerous level of body fat and then making sure that you have the right amount of food coming in. And really, if you're walking around eight days before a fight at 143, and you haven't really had them like buckle down hard and heavy. You could probably make 125 relatively easy. And you, I think you'd be, if not the champ, you'd definitely be in the top two, like very yes. quickly, you know? Yes, sir. I believe so. Like, I, you know, some of these girls at 135 are really big compared to me. Kat Zangano is fairly big. Uh, Amanda Nunes is really powerful. Jermaine DeRandini is huge compared to me. And so, you know, I, I think our skill sets. I don't mind matching up my skill set with those girls, but sometimes it's like, man, the size difference and the power that they're going to have over me, I feel like could be a real disadvantage. So, you know, right now there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just doing my best. And I think about guys like BJ Penn and Frankie Edgar who became champions in weight classes that they were basically walking around at that weight. And I look up to those guys a lot for that and, uh, you know, just do what I can do. And then if they open the 125 class, I'll be first in line. (laughs) It's changed so much that those guys have dropped weight now. They won the weight classes years ago at weights they're yeah. walking around at, but for the guys, everyone's had to adapt and adjust, and he's a, they both adapt and adjust and drop down. You know, so yeah. BJ's next fight's gonna be 145. He's coming, he's coming in at weight class low. So it's 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 amazing how it's changed, how much people have had to get into their diet. But that's great. I'm glad your, your spirits are still good. I'd be in full panic mode, just so you know. I'd be stressed out. And, <laughs> like I'm canceling all interviews. I got to get on the phone. I got to keep calling Joe Silver and find out what the hell's happening. I got to know if I'm going or not. And so I'm glad that you're oh. dealing with it so well. I, uh, well, I did freak out. Remember, I've had a whole day to like calm down. <laughs> but yesterday I was crying and I just thought, shit, like all that hard work and the money, of course. And I just feel so much like this is my time and this is my year. And, and I'm just so ready to go mentally and physically. And like, I called my coach and I'm like, shit, she backed out. What the fuck? You know? And he said, listen, don't worry. He said, Sean's going to find somebody like you can't do anything about it. And actually my coach did a really good job talking me down and, and like, this has never really happened to me before. So it was a new experience, but like I said, I've been working so hard on my mental game. This was just another thing that I could like practice, you know? Perfect. So, uh, yeah. I like it. I like it. Lauren, thanks so much for coming on here. I appreciate you taking a couple minutes. And uh, once you get an opponent, I'll be calling you again, looking for uh, looking for another interview. Please do. I'll hit you up. I'll let you know. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Bye.